Hi, uh, my name is Alan Rantzel, um, and I'm, I'm going to be talking about Filecoin Green. And I, I wanted to open with this graph here, which is from the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is responsible for some of the most rigorous, most peer-reviewed science in the history of science. Um, and what they say is that in this global context, if we want to avoid the worst impacts of climate change, we would need to decarbonize very quickly. So each line here is an emissions pathway for the entire world. And um, each, each of these scenarios is compatible with that goal, right? So limiting warming, avoiding the worst impacts of climate change. And what we really see in these scenarios, right, is that emissions globally need to peak very soon. They need to uh, trail off by, reduce by about a factor of a half um, by 2030. And then emissions need to be significantly net negative beyond 2050. And so uh, Megan Kleiman of the Filecoin Foundation was recently talking and said that one of the things she loves about our community is that we take this very long view and that given that view, we should care a lot about these things. And so we're gonna to talk today about some of the, the tools that we're building in order to help make the environmental impacts of Filecoin transparent and also to then give people tools to reduce and mitigate them with the ultimate goal of making Filecoin environmentally beneficial. And so Filecoin Green really lies at the intersection of these two questions, right? So how can we make Filecoin in verifiably environmentally beneficial? And then how can Filecoin help to catalyze the transition to renewable energy across the rest of the economy? So here's a, a simplified view of the Filecoin value chain, right? Sort of in general, you have these inputs. One of the major inputs is electricity. Other inputs are hardware. They go into the world's largest distributed file storage network. That file storage network provides this, this useful resource to the Web3 community being storage. And then clients are able to use that storage, right? And so our thought in Filecoin Green is how can we nucleate technologies within the Filecoin network that allow this sort of behavior of the network to emerge? So firstly, we're going to talk about tools to measure the environmental impacts of Filecoin. So what in the, the electricity is what we've been focusing on, but in the longer term hardware also, what are, what are the environmental impacts of those inputs? How do they get used in the Filecoin network? And then can we give people the ability to look at individual storage providers and gauge what those environmental impacts are? And then can we set up those tools to be open source and composable so that other people in the ecosystem who build on top of Filecoin can also measure their environmental impact and pass that information along through their value chain, right? So what if it just became a standard in Web3 that every interaction you have, you know what the environmental impact of that interaction is, and you're able to take action to reduce and mitigate it. Then the second part of the tools that we're building are, are that other piece, right? Reducing and mitigating that. So if you know what the environmental impact is, what actions can you take in order to reduce that impact? And in doing this, how can we transform Filecoin itself into a network that does verifiable environmental good? So we use energy, maybe we buy more renewable energy than we're actually using, and we're gonna talk about that. Maybe we, uh, we know what the embodied emissions of our hardware is. Can we do better than, than zero? Can we do better than net zero and make all of that impact truly verifiable, right? Because that's how we work with data, right? We want data to be verifiable. We want data to be interoperable. So we want to be able to trace these environmental impacts and things that we're doing to reduce and mitigate them uh, many levels throughout the value chain. And so why should Filecoin be the world's greenest blockchain? So one, one answer is that Filecoin's design itself is conducive to carbon accounting, right? So this is a really important point. When storage providers are contributing capacity to the network, their, uh, their, their impact on the network, right? They're contributing that capacity contributes to the emergent behavior of this network, which is to produce this, this massive amount of file storage, right? But the services provided by individual storage providers are non-fungible, right? So you can, you can look at all the different storage providers that are offering to store your data, and you can decide who you want to start with in your, in your deal. And so that provides this really transparent point 
in which to uh, connect environmental impacts from individual storage provider operations to individual minor IDs and deals on that minor ID, right? Which is not a design feature that a lot of other blockchains have. Then secondly, the world needs a Merkle forest of forests. So the Merkle forest refers to this idea that, that Juan coined in 2017, talking about how once you build everything based on hash links, your data is verifiable, not just within the, the narrow data structure that you're building, but within the, the whole sort of universe of data structure built on hash links, which is extremely powerful and gives you that interoperability and verifiability that are really gonna be key to tracking environmental impacts many stages throughout a value chain. And so if any community is going to build those tools, it should be this community. Then third, we use a lot of energy and we use it on purpose, right? So largely blockchains that have made strong environmental claims fall into two sort of categories. One category is blockchains that don't use a lot of energy because of their consensus mechanism. Right, and they, they can buy renewable energy, that's great. They're not buying a ton of renewable energy within the context of renewable energy markets, but that's great. We're really glad that they're, they're being verifiably renewable. The other category of blockchains that have made strong renewable claims so far, they tend to use a lot of energy, but those claims don't, seem, don't tend to be verifiable. Right, so maybe they're based on surveys that are, are anonymous. There's no consequences for uh, giving an incorrect answer on that survey. We really want these environmental impacts to be traceable and unambiguously verifiable, right? And Filecoin is going to use a lot of energy and also makes a commitment to verifiability, right? We're building the storage layer for the decentralized web, right? So that's just going to take a lot of energy. It just is. And so we can combine the fact that we're going to use a lot of energy with the fact that we can demand that that energy be renewable and use that as a leverage point within that value chain in order to catalyze the decarbonization of the rest of the economy. So, you know, here are these three sort of steps. First, we have to measure our environmental impact. Secondly, we have to reduce and mitigate that impact. And third, we have to connect with uh, communities outside of our own community um, and also make more connections within this community to, to really build a green Filecoin movement. So this dashboard is, is relevant to that first section, which is measuring. So this is data that is going to be released um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, we've been working really hard to use on-chain proofs in order to estimate what the electricity use of the Filecoin network is. We've put all that information into this dashboard. And there's, there's a bunch of, of important features here. I'm going to run through a few of them. Firstly, uh, you can see that the energy used to seal sectors and then the energy used to store data over time are the main components of Filecoin energy use. So, so that makes a certain amount of sense. For each of these bounds here, um, or for each of these variables, we've calculated an upper bound, a lower bound, and an estimate. And so that is based on data from a bunch of different sources. So it's based on benchmarks, it's based on surveys, it's based on interviews with individual storage providers where we've really understood their operations and their energy use. And it's, it's also built on direct measurements of energy use from storage provider operations, right? So we've combined that information into a model and we're gonna be working hard to improve that model over time, make that model really transparent, make the data available. We're funding academic research in order to study how to measure the energy use of Filecoin and distributed systems generally, because it's a really hard problem and we need better tools to do that. And we're, we're, uh, we're really excited about what we've done so far and about uh, releasing this data going forward. Um, currently, we think that Filecoin uses about 130 megawatts of power, which is a significant amount of power. It's about 1% of what Bitcoin uses. And you can compare that to global data centers and say, okay, Filecoin uses about a uh, half a percent of the electricity that data centers across the world use. It also stores about half a percent of the data that data centers across the, the world store. And so that's, that's roughly in line, right? So, so Filecoin, uh, we shouldn't think of Filecoin as being a dramatically, uh, you know, we shouldn't think of Filecoin as being a wasteful blockchain, right? Filecoin is using energy to do things that are useful for people. And it is roughly in line with data centers across the world. Another really great feature of this dashboard is that um, as we refine these models, 
this dashboard is meant to be inherently upgradable. So we're just able to add new models to the dashboard and we can version our different, um, our different models of Filecoin interviews. Now, the really powerful thing about this dashboard is that you can look up individual storage providers and see in a granular way, based on that storage provider's activity on the network, what their energy use is, right? So you type in the storage provider, you can see how much energy they took to sell sectors over time, to store sectors over time, their total energy use, which includes things like estimates for cooling and, and power conversion losses. And then you can also export all of this data for all of these graphs at the epoch timescale. So at the block timescale, which gives us this really granular information that we can use to explore how Filecoin interacts with electricity markets. So the second part here is to reduce and mitigate these impacts. So this is how renewable energy markets work. Um, I didn't design them. This is just how they work right now. When a, a, a renewable energy producer, so for example, a solar farm or a wind farm produces renewable energy, the electrons go into the power grid, the renewable energy attributes are collected and packaged into something called a renewable energy certificate. You as a, a Filecoin storage provider or another actor can use electricity and buy a renewable energy certificate from a solar farm or wind farm, say, or a hydro, hydro plant that is in your area. And that's how you prove that you're using renewable energy. That's just the, the industry standard definition there. And so what we did is we worked with amazing partners at the Energy Web Foundation who are building this platform called Energy Web Zero that we're helping to support. And we got together a group of storage providers who were interested in proving that they used renewable energy. And what we did is we got them, we, we used some of these estimates, right? So from a few slides back, we tied everything to the upper bound. So we really wanna say, okay, we're going to buy enough renewable energy, not just to cover the estimated energy use, but our estimated upper bound to make sure that we are using at least as much renewable energy as we consume. And we are channeling at least as much money to renewable energy producers in order to support future renewable energy developments as is implied by our energy use, right? So we took that upper bound for each of these storage providers. We had them buy renewable energy credits on the Energy Web Zero platform. And we added this column to the reputation system, PhilRep, which as you can see here, shows the amount of renewable energy purchased that's tied to an individual miner ID, right? You can click that link and go to the Energy Web Zero verification page where you can see information about that REC transaction. So you can see when the RECs were produced, you can see which miner ID purchased them. And then if you click that link in the bottom right-hand corner of the Energy Web Zero page, you can see the actual certificate issued by the local REC registry, so the local renewable energy credit registry that's tracking renewable energy production. And you can see that that REC was redeemed to that Filecoin storage provider. You can also see exactly where that renewable energy was produced. In many cases, you can get GPS coordinates. The information that you have depends on just what the local REC registry records. But this is the level of granularity and verifiability we're talking about, right? So you can trace individual deals, individual storage providers to renewable energy credits that are produced by a specific solar or wind or hydro producer and know if you take some action within the Filecoin ecosystem, this is where the renewable energy is coming from to support that. So we're really excited and think that this level of verifiability is what we need as a standard going forward. You can read about this on, on a Medium article that we published with Energy Web. There's been really great reception for this, this first sort of foray into doing this, um, including Jesse um, tweeted out that uh, crypto companies are moving orders of magnitude faster in their journey to decarbonize versus most Fortune 500 companies, and Filecoin is at the head of the pack. So we're really excited about this, and we're pushing really hard um, in this direction to make uh, Filecoin environmentally, um, environmentally positive and verifiable. So our phase two demo, we're scaling this up by more than a factor of 100. We're going to buy renewable energy at a gigawatt hour scale, which is a huge amount of renewable energy. It's also better. So what I mean by that is that the industry standard is that you purchase renewable energy that corresponds to the year when you consumed it or six months before that year or three months after that year, right? So that's just the industry standard as going back to that picture, right? Where, um, 
where energy and its renewable attributes are sort of separated from each other and then come back together, this is not a very strong tie, right, between renewable energy production and consumption, which is highly necessary if we're going to decarbonize the grid. So what we're showing here in this new demo is that we can do a better job and try to push toward shorter accounting periods where you have this closer match between renewable energy production and consumption. And that's something we can do because we have this really granular, really good data on how much energy we're using and when. So thirdly, we need to, to connect with others in this space. So a really great way to do that is through the Crypto Climate Accord. The Crypto Climate Accord, which Protocol Labs and the Filecoin Foundation are both part of, uh, aims to achieve net zero, so net zero carbon emissions for signatories of the Climate Accord by 2030 and to build tools to make all of crypto industry-wide verifiably green by 2040. Right. And we, we really think this is, a, this is a great place to help contribute to standards in this industry as they're being developed and to push to make these tools really accessible and easy to use. So a ton of people have been involved in this work. Uh, people in the PL ecosystem, Angie has really catalyzed a lot of this and, and connected research that we've been doing to what the ecosystem needs right now. PL research, I worked with Michael Hammersley for a long time on these questions. Evan Miyazono catalyzed a bunch of the, the research that formed the basis of what we're doing now. The Sentinel team has given us a ton of data. We, we're working with the reputation system team to tie in renewable energy attributes into the reputation system. A ton of storage providers are super supportive and, and participating in all of this. The Filecoin Foundation has been, has been helping us with a lot of this and helping us develop tools. Other organizations, the Energy Web Foundation is the farthest along in building Web3 native tools for working with renewable energy credits and other environmental attributes in a really granular way. The Crypto Climate Accord, Three Degrees, um, were, as I said, funding academic research to measure the energy impact of distributed systems and build new tools for that with, with Harold Rankin, who's a professor in the, the Open University in the Netherlands. And so the last thing is, is please get involved. So if you want to be part of this community and you're on Filecoin Slack, you can join the Phil Green channel, which is where we're talking a lot of these tools. It's where these tools are going to be announced as they're released. It's where new demonstration projects, new opportunities to buy recs are going to be announced. And it's where we're collaborating to figure out what needs to be built in order to support this vision, right? What tools do we need in order to just make it standard throughout crypto and throughout Web3 that when you take some action, uh, assuming everyone involved in that value chain is on board with this, the environmental impacts of your action are just transparent to you. And the, the additional actions that you can take in order to reduce or mitigate those environmental impacts are also transparent to you. So what tools need to be built in order to, to build that. That's something we're discussing on that channel. If you're a storage provider, please start using these tools as they come out. Check your energy use against the dashboard, which is going to be available in a few weeks, and participate in our, our, uh, our next round of purchasing Rex and Energy Web Zero. We're hoping to open that up to any storage provider who wants to do that in quarter one of next year. Um, if you're a developer, please hack green with us. Please think about how the, these tools can be used to trace environmental impacts through whatever you're building. And please help us think about how to build new tools to make that whole environmental accounting system more robust and built into Web3. And then if you're in an organization, please join the Crypto Climate Accord and help us make crypto green. Thank you. Mm -hmm.